for many, many years, this was seen as the edge of the ancient world. It has, you know, drawn people for the last 10,000 years to be at the very edge of the world itself. This week, I am in the kingdom, the McGillicuddy Reeks. Also known as the Kerry Mountains, at more than 1,000 metres are the highest mountain range in Ireland. These remote landscapes and islands have drawn settlers from the Neolithic farmers to early Christian monks. Since Victorian times, Kerry people have been tourism pioneers, drawing visitors to the lakes of Killarney. I'm going to see today if I can emulate the low carbon footprint of Victorian tourists by traveling the Ring of Kerry by bike to visit some businesses which are leading the way in creating a sustainable environmental tourism industry. My first stopping point is a good omen. This is a former petrol station turned into a huge bike rental shop. forward to this. I have never gone on a proper cycling trip before because I just learned to cycle this year, so it's going to be great. The EPA's Innovative Green Hospitality Award has had great success in greening hotels and has now been extended to B&Bs, restaurants and pubs all over the country. Last year, a project commenced by Fulcher Ireland to provide environmental training and certification to businesses on the Ring of Kerry. They all took steps to reduce their energy and water consumption, the amount of waste generated, and to ensure they source fresh seasonal produce from local suppliers. I'm hoping to visit some of the 53 green tourism businesses around the Ring of Kerry. Today I'm hoping to not seek out the obvious, but to travel into the heart of the McGillicuddy Reeks, to visit the most remote valley in Ireland. a 10 kilometer cycle, I'm hoping to meet Con Moriarty, who has just brought a group of tourists down Ireland's highest mountain, Caran Tool. Con has been running a niche environmental tourism business called Hidden Ireland Tours for 25 years. So where are we right now, Con? We're standing at the west end of the, of the Black Valley. It's a very special place that lies along, it parallels the highest mountains in the country, forms the whole southern flank of the Mickey Reeks. These houses behind us here were the last houses in Ireland to turn on the electricity in 1978. Really? It's a very, very wild place, you know, it usually kind of shocks people from Ireland and even outside Ireland. We always seem to be looking for some distant horizon. There's some American or there's some European who's going to come and bail us out. In actual fact, our biggest asset is what's behind us here. Our biggest asset is in our, is in, in our rivers and in our mountains and in our incredible headlands, which are not, are not just Irish headlands. These are, these are the very, very bulwarks of Western Europe. So they're incredibly powerful places. My grandfather spent 45 years of his life guiding people up here. He died long before I was born in the 1940s. But tourism in this area is about 250 years old. It certainly got a huge boost when Queen Victoria visited here in the 1860s. And back then, long before the word ecotourism became fashionable, that was in essence what it is. People came here to hike and people came here to, to fish. Sadly and bizarrely, post-independence in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, all the way through almost into the present epoch, we seem to have turned our back to what it is that brought people here in the first place. On a very, very simple level, things like the New York Times or the, or the London Times writing an article that the biggest lake in the Republic was so poisoned that the people of Galway couldn't drink out of it. You can imagine what that did to the angling industry. What do you think we need to be doing more of then, you know, to improve our, our tourist industry then? We're sure that we're not selling the iron sweater and the leprechaun anymore, but um, we're not quite sure what we're meant to replace that with. The type of people I'm interested in getting into the country are really the kind of people that my father and many, many others 40 and 50 years ago and even people 100 years ago had identified would come to an area like this because they were inspired by this incredible landscape. So they're essentially nature lovers. Today, that market is a highly developed market. It's incredibly fluid. It's as likely to get on a Ryanair flight and go hiking in Slovenia as it is to come to Kerry. 
I would find it very sad if I came back in 500 years' time and I looked into these alleys and there was lots of wild eagles and deer and maybe even wolves wandering around here but, no, but nobody living here. Mm. And I think this really is an industry that can provide us with a sustainable means of, of having you know, local, vibrant communities. Khan has certainly made me look at the landscape differently. An important aspect of a green holiday is to support local communities. As I journeyed on through towns like Sneem and Waterville on the Ring of Kerry, I was impressed by the large cluster of environmentally certified tourism businesses in the county, all listed in my green guide. Port McGee, my destination at last. I chose the Moorings because they have recently been awarded gold for their environmental business efforts by the Green Hospitality Awards. Hello, lovely nice to, meet to meet you. It's so nice here, I love it. You've obviously been learning very fast if you've already won two gold awards. It, it is uh, completely going back to, to the costs, you know. You will reduce your costs, there's no two ways about that. How much do you think, do you, would you say you've reduced now, cost-wise? Like the water, our water bill has halved since 2006. What about energy bills? I think we'd reduce by about 30%. That's amazing. Yeah. All our suppliers are Kerry, really, are they? Well, most of them, 20 oh, of Over 20 of our suppliers are from, are from Kerry. Kerry. So you're planning on continuing, then, I take it? Oh, yes. We're going to go, go forever with this. We're going to go for tower. the Platinum Award next, hopefully. Great. The business people I have met on my journey have shown me that it is possible to have a sustainable environmental tourism industry in Ireland if we go back to what drew visitors here in the first place our unspoilt environment and scenery. In our next episode, the final in this series of EcoEye, we look at Ireland's huge green potential for thousands of new jobs that could get our economy back on track. Mm -hmm.